Okay, so now the, the, the room is complete. Uh, once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the plenary session entitled The Identification Arena, which continues our list of plenaries this morning. If you're joining us online, then welcome to the 31st live cast, which is being brought to you live from the Ambassador's Auditorium in the Palais de Congrès in Marrakesh, Morocco, where the ID for Africa 2022, the augmented general meeting is underway. I'm Joseph Arik, Executive Chairman of ID for Africa, and I'm pleased to be hosting this episode and this panel, which will consist of four segments. I would like to start segment one of this plenary session by welcoming the Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy of the Federal Government of Nigeria, Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami. My guest is a professor of cybersecurity and is widely known as the Digital Minister. He has chaired or is involved in just about every committee in Nigeria related to digital transformation, digital identity, national harmonization and interoperability with the rest of the continent. Professor Pantami, thank you for being with us for this one-on-one -on -one conversation, and I'd like to invite you to the stage. Protocol. Thank you. Thank you. Please have a seat. Now, NIMSI, which is the National Identity Management Commission of Nigeria, is building the continent's largest identity system, which is now under your supervision. I mean, clearly this is a responsibility on your shoulders, but it's also something that must be very exciting to you, knowing your passion for digital and for identity. My question to you is, <clears throat> share with us and the audience, what is your vision for the identity ecosystem of Nigeria and for where you want to see NIMSI going? Thank you very much for... Here we go. Thank you very much for commending our modest effort in building the biggest and also the largest national database in Africa, particularly looking at our population. And uh, furthermore, my vision for NIMSI is to ensure that the national database under the National Identity Management Commission becomes the primary database in the country. And secondly, it also becomes the database to be utilized for national planning when it comes to education, agriculture, security, commerce, economy, and uh, many more. In addition, as you all know that Nigeria established a ministry for the digital economy in which I happen to be uh, the minister in charge of uh, that ministry on the 14th of uh, October 2019. The digital ID is always the foundation for building a digital economy. There are prerequisites to achieving a digital economy when it comes to citizens' involvement. Number one is digital ID. Digital ID, according to Deloitte, is the fabric for building a digital economy. Number two, bank account. Number three, broadband penetration. And number four, smartphone. These are the four requirements for involving citizens towards building a digital economy. So our passion is to ensure that database under the National Identity Management Commission in Nigeria becomes, number one, the primary database, and number two, it becomes the database to be utilized for our national planning in whatever we do, and number three, to become the foundational ID of building our digital economy in Nigeria. 
from the time and the effort so far is uh, encouraging, from the time NIMSI was transferred to me to be under my supervision in 2020. The commission was established in 2007. By 2020, the time it was transferred to my supervision, it spent 13 years. And the total enrollment in the database was around 41 million people. But from October, or let me say from around August, when it was transferred to me, and October, when the process was uh, finalized in 2022, to May this year, uh, sorry, in 2020 to May this year, we have increased the enrollment to over 83 million people. She almost doubled. More than doubled, really. And this is what we have achieved within less than two years compared to the previous achievement of uh, more than even the achievement of 13 years. Right. So the database is 83 million, which by implication, I think most probably only three countries in Africa, excluding Nigeria, that their population that high. exceeds that. Only, I think, uh, Ethiopia, Egypt, and DR Congo. And you already, you already have that foundational database covering yes. these people. We're going to talk about where it's going to go. Uh, and of course, DJ Aziz will be with us in, this, in the fourth segment, where Thank we'll you. give us a little bit more detail. But I, I wanted to talk to you about, clearly, um, you've got the momentum with you now. You're yes. pushing forward. And you have a wonderful vision. Um, and so the potential for the ecosystem is enormous. Uh, there's one thing that's puzzling, and it would be helpful if you can give your analysis of it, and it has to do with um, the fact that lawmakers in Nigeria have yet to create the enabling legislation for presumably what could be the most important um, infrastructure development in the country. What is that due? Why is Nigeria not arriving at getting the lawmakers to put the law that will define the framework for, for um, what NIMSI can do, but also assure the public that privacy and data protection are protected? Where are we? To be fair with you, we don't have any vacuum in Nigeria with regards to the issues you have raised. Mm. If you look at NIMSI Act 2007, you will clearly discover that the law empowers the agency to collect citizens' data, particularly section 25, 26, 27, 28, and up to the last chapter, 29. If you go through this, you will discover that there is no any vacuum. NIMSI is supposed to be the central database of the country, and if you look at the both members of NIMSI, beside three external members, all the remaining both members are representatives of critical institutions of government that collect data, like Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Internal Security, Office of National Security Advisor, Police, National Population Commission, Federal Illegal Revenue Services, and many more. They constitute the board of our NIMSI. NIMSI. So we have a law in place. And in that law, it even, it has been mentioned clearly in Section 27 that no one is allowed to enjoy government services without obtaining this national identity number in Nigeria. Even government services is not allowed. It is mandatory for obtaining passport, mandatory for writing any exam, mandatory for driver's license and the many more. And failure to obtain it after a period of time, there is going to be a sanction. And this is stated in section 29 of the law. When it comes to privacy and data protection, I think Nigeria should be commended for that. Nigeria most probably could be the first country to come up with a law on data protection. That is Nigeria Data Protection Regulation. The law was uh, approved on the 28th of uh, January 2019. And in that law is Nigeria Data Protection Regulation. Yes. However, it was a subsidiary legislation. But in our law, subsidiary legislation is almost as powerful as the principal legislation. Because based on our law, uh, uh, a regulatory body has power to come up with a subsidiary law. And that subsidiary law is almost as powerful as the principal law that empowers that regulatory body to come up with it. And up to the Supreme Court in Nigeria, a subsidiary legislation is 
being presented as a law. Uh, Furthermore, on that issue, recently, based on a memo I have written to the President of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, he has approved the establishment of Nigeria Data Protection Bureau. So now we have an institution of government, an agency of government that is mandated to ensure data privacy and data protection. In addition, we have also another principal legislation in the pipeline, that principal legislation. So we are done with the draft, and now it is before the National Assembly. So it's a parliamentary activity. That's now we have a parliamentary okay. beside the subsidiary so. legislation. In addition, if you look at the issue of data protection in Nigeria, it's not just an issue of an existing law, but rather it is a constitutional requirement. Mm. If you look at the Constitution of Nigeria, Section 37, yeah. you will clearly see that privacy and protection of your conversation and many more are not only being provided by law, but rather they are constitutional. And this is in addition to so many existing laws where we have provision of data protection in the country. So it is because of this I want to say that the issue of privacy and data protection had been covered by the existing legislation we have. And so they did not feel there was an urgency to rush and, and, and do something wrong? Or uh, why haven't they... Because in many countries, regulations are in place, but regulations are government-issued, uh, uh, basically, laws, but they're not uh, legislations passed by the parliament as fundamental. Uh, that is why I said what we did for having the subsidiary legislation is to ensure there is no vacuum. No and vacuum. two, the process of enacting a law differs from one country to another. Mm -hmm. And also, the power of law depends. So in Nigeria, subsidiary legislation is a law. And we already have subsidiary legislation. And when it comes to the principal legislation, it is in the pipeline. Now it is before the National Assembly. Okay. What would you tell our brothers and sisters in other countries when it comes to the enabling legislation for their foundational ID systems? What, what do you advise them based on your long experience in this domain? To be fair, what I will say, yeah, usually our people feel uncomfortable when they are urged to obtain national ID. They usually feel uncomfortable. Why? People want change, but nobody wants to change. Mm. They don't want to change individually, but they need to see positive change in their countries. So what is most important is to convince your citizens that digital ID is not just beyond knowing your identity, but rather having a national database in your country is a prerequisite to your success towards education because with a complete database government will be able to come up with a plan and policies for education plan and policies for healthcare plan and policies for agriculture plan and policies for security without having a complete database government will just continue to make assumptions and that could not lead to a very successful result mm. number two let us also remind them that it is difficult to achieve sustainable development goals of the United Nations without having digital ID in our country. And that is why the United Nations set up a target, which could be a bit ambitious but realistic, that by 2030, each and every person in the world should have a legal identity. And this is under 16.9. Each and every person in the world should have a, a legal identity. And based on the report of the United Nations Development Program, as at May 2022 this year, around nearly 1 billion people in the world do not have a legal identity, almost 1 billion people. So this is a huge number. And by implication, is almost near the population of Africa as a continent. Yes, in fact, half of those billion are in Africa. So, so half of that is in Africa. in Africa. So they don't even, not only digital ID, they don't even have a legal identity. Hmm. Some they exist, but they don't have any identity to show that they are from this part of the world or this country. Right. So I think this is something also that is very important. In Africa, we should not be left behind. Identity is key. Even not to your government, but to you personally, it is key to your success. But, but my, my question is more like, before you start building programs, should you be doing um, a legal review to make sure? I always cite uh, Morocco, for example, before they started writing a single line of code, 
they ensured that the legal framework was in place to make sure every aspect of data protection, privacy, and, and authority to do things were coherently done and, and, and passed by the parliament. So right now, we are seeing, not just in Nigeria, we're seeing a hybrid arise. Basically, you go and you build systems, and then you build laws. Um, perhaps you had good regulations, so that covered the law. But if there is a vacuum, wouldn't you believe that we should pay more attention to the legal framework so people get more trust? As I earlier insisted, there is no vacuum in Nigeria. Nigeria, there is no vacuum. There is no vacuum. But what I only say that we are coming up with a principal legislation, but as of today, there is no vacuum. Okay. Because the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation is very clear on that, and it is a law in Nigeria. Okay. The provision of our Constitution, Section 39 and Section uh, 37, very clear. If you look at even NIDA Act 2007 under Section 6, it's also very clear, the issue of data protection. If you look at Freedom of Information, Section 14, there is a provision of data protection in our law. And if you look at also the NIMSI Act under Section 26, there yeah. is a provision of data protection and regulations. So there is so no you have, vacuum. You have a, you have a rich... However, uh, we are only trying to improve on improve the on existing it. laws we have. Okay. But there is no vacuum. Okay, let's move on to the question of, uh, which is on the mind of many of the identity authorities, about how to finance these projects. There's a puzzle that emerges once you start talking about that. Um, India's most respected government policy institute, NITI, recently said that Adhar, which is India's foundational digital identity program, has saved India 29 billion US dollars. Um, if you ask the country, according to the government accounting office, the program cost no more than $1.5 billion. This is an ROI of 15 to 1. If you believe it, if you think there's a fudge, but it's still phenomenal, 15 to 1, even at 10 to 1, even at 5 to 1. So apart from identity being a right, it seems like it's a good business proposition. So why is it that governments are not clamoring to invest in it? Why isn't it that cabinets are all saying, we need to put a budget to build ID systems because we see a return on investment? Do you think this value proposition is not understood in Africa? I strongly agree with you on this, that most of our governments in Africa do not understand how digital ID is important. They only consider it as just an ordinary identification number or cut. They fail to realize that it is the foundational ID of building our society. And it is also key to the success of our society. So what we should do at this point is to ensure that we continue to create awareness that our foundational ID is key to whatever we do in our countries whether in education, whether in health, whether in security, whether in agri, whether in whatever we do, that foundational ID is key, is a prerequisite to our success. I think creating awareness is key. And I will give you an example. When NIMSI was not under our supervision in Nigeria, they were being confronted with so many challenges here and there. When NIMSI was transferred to our supervision, within a month, I engaged the president of my country to show to him how important digital ID was. He listened to me attentively. We discussed the issue extensively. And I immediately directed the DG NIMSI to come up with their immediate challenges. He came up with a report requesting a huge amount of money to be given, which at that time was around 25 billion naira. I presented the request before the Federal Executive Council. There and then it was approved. And since the establishment of NIMSI in 2007, I think when it comes to internal issues, it was the highest amount of money they have ever received. Why? Because of that engagement and convincing your principals about how important digital ID is to your country. Secondly, there are other opportunities that can complement that. In Nigeria, what we did in order to facilitate the process, we made digital ID number as a prerequisite to even purchasing 
your SIM card. Mm -hmm. Just to make a phone call, you need it. And in order to uh, uh, somehow uh, democratize the process, we approve licensing some federal and public, uh, uh, sorry, public and private institutions to support government when it comes to enrollment. 230 institutions were granted that license to enroll citizens based on the template and framework sent up by NIMSI. That is what actually facilitated the process. And in addition, government is in the process of also obtaining another loan from World Bank, mm -hmm. which we do hope that by 2025, the country will be able to have a complete database. So there are so many opportunities that can be uh, uh, explored in order to achieve that. Now, Financing from government, allowing uh, private institutions to come and support government, even through their corporate social responsibility, transaction like the also. telecommunications industry and the many more, and even obtaining loan when it becomes necessary. Okay. Now, if I put my sh myself in the shoes of the... Of a, of the finance minister or the president or the prime minister and they ask you mr minister can you tell us what do you think the return on investment forget about identity being a right what do you think the economic value of identity is to our country in terms of return on investment are we getting to that level of discussion in cabinets or it's too still too early the return on investment cannot be quantifiable okay Firstly, digital ID is a prerequisite to getting your security right. If you look at the developed countries like in the U.S., you cannot go and start working without obtaining your social security number. I live in the United Kingdom. You cannot work for a day without having national insurance number. Another example you have given here of uh, Adhar yeah. in the India, Nadira in Pakistan, for example. Right. I work in the Middle East before teaching in a university, I had to obtain my ECAMA number. Yeah. So that one is key even to your security. And security is the primary responsibility of each and every government. So when an issue, some, an effort will support your security, then there is no way you can quantify that okay. because it is beyond that. Saving a life of one citizen through that effort, there is no way you can quantify you can in quantify. monetary term. Okay. Number two, without having a national database, government will just continue making assumption. And that assumption could be right and it could be wrong. Right. Today, in many African countries, there is no complete database. Okay. The best database you can obtain may be 90% okay, but most of them do not have a complete database. So you will see making an assumption of population by plus minus 10%. You cannot continue to make that assumption. Plus minus 10% in Nigeria, for example, could, in, could be up to 20 million people which is a population of another country. another country. So if you make that assumption in your education or in your agriculture, then by implication, there is a waste in that. Mm -hmm. So by having the national database, you will be able to come up with your national plan mm -hmm. with precision and accuracy without making unnecessary assumptions. So basically, if I to, to rephrase what you said, it's not about and return on investment in terms of monetary, even though we know that will come because it will stimulate the economy. Yeah. It is about governments taking responsibility to, to doing their job right, which is building the infrastructure to service their people. Absolutely. Okay, so let's leave it at that. I think that's a good a way, a good vision to, 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 to explain. Um, I, wanted, I have two quick questions for you um, because we're gonna run out of time. One of them, is, as you know, digital identity is not about importing technology from the outside. It's about developing local capacity. It's about developing the knowledge, making knowledge transfer. What are you doing or the government of Nigeria is doing to encourage uh, the development of capacity in Nigeria? We have so many policies in place to encourage that. Firstly, in Nigeria, in whatever we do, either within the digital ID ecosystem or outside, we give priority and preference to our indigenous technology. For example, the acting president of Nigeria on the 1st of May 2017 signed an executive order mm. on the local content patronage. 
also the president of Nigeria on 12th of February 2018 signed another presidential order directing government institutions to give priority and preference to our indigenous technology in products and also in services. These two laws in place show to you how we give priority and preference to our indigenous technology. Mm -hmm. Secondly, within, in order to create more awareness when it comes to digital ID, I think based on the report I have received from the National Identity Management Commission, Nigeria is the first country in the world to commemorate National ID Day. Yes, of course. We are the first country in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think we deserve commendation here. Absolutely. And another, and, and, and another round of applause. <laughs> another round of applause. Yes, you have been a very, very strong supporter of September 16, and we're hoping the rest of the African countries will follow suit. I'm glad you made that plug, because that was actually one of my other questions that I wanted to oh, ask that you That is about. very important. So. You may wish to ask the question so that I can elaborate <laughs> I can. further. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, furthermore, even in NIMSI today, in Nigerian uh, digital ID ecosystem, we have so many indigenous solutions. Yeah. Firstly, for example, as it is today, the enrollment institutions are all local companies. Mm. The 203 institutions we have licensed so far are all indigenous companies. Yeah. Two, the solutions we have been adopting, like the App applications, and tokenization. The tokenization, for right. example, Which is we'll an talk about is an is an indigenous solution. Right. For example, the tab we are using for the enrollment, where you can enroll people even right. in a community where there is no broadband penetration, so that you can enroll them. When you get connected, you update your record. Right. They are indigenous solutions. So yeah. most of the facilities we are using today are indigenous solutions. Yeah. And yeah. and if you look at the success we are recording in deploying indigenous solutions is really amazing. And furthermore, there are government policies to support that. Recently, the federal government has approved the national policy for the promotion of indigenous content in the telecommunications sector. And that policy is another effort in order to support the development of our indigenous uh, uh, right. product in the country. So, so it's, it's really showing that um, paying attention to building local capacity allows the countries to become sovereign, allows the countries to develop essentially their own freedom to make changes, to innovate. We will be talking in, in segment four about the tokenization application with yes. DG Aziz, which is now b being looked at by many, many countries around the world, including developed countries, as a model for empowering people to use their digital ID. And it is an it, in, it indigenous solution. It's an indigenous solution, exactly. It's an example. And what is important for African countries to understand? We will not be able to strengthen our economy without making a deliberate effort to ensure mm. that we produce what we consume and we consume what we produce. Mm. This is very important. In each and every sector, let us ensure that the significant percentage of what we need is being yeah. produced locally. And that is one of the most efficient ways of supporting our economy to grow. Okay, Professor Pantami, yes. we're running out of time, but there's one thing that I know the, the audience often asked me about that I wanna direct to you. It could be somewhat political, so you can tell me this is not something we wanna discuss. And it has to do with the idea that many countries, including in Nigeria, the electoral commissions seem to be hesitant to allow the foundational ID system to provide identity. They feel the foundational ID system is run by the government, it's not an independent commission, and as such, they don't trust that the government is not going to bias it. Um, INEC continues to build their own database. They are at now 8, 83 or 84 million as well. Um, how do you see harmonization between the two, if any? I think the best way to resolve the issue is through engagement. And number two, there is no database today in Nigeria that will replace the NIMSI database because by law, only NIMSI is supposed to provide that national identity to our citizens. Whether any electoral body 
has its own database or not, that will not in any way replace the database with the National Identity Management Commission. Furthermore, based on the provision of our law in Nigeria, that is NIMSI Act 2007, if you look at section 26 and 27 and section 29, it is clearly stated that even for you to obtain voter's card mm -hmm. to partake in election is not allowed without having this valid national ID number. But so far, they I'm, have been doing it without I'm it. coming. Okay. Why, if you look at Electoral Act, mm -hmm. for example, Electoral Act that has recently been amended, it allows the use of a driver's license, passport, and the same national identity. Mm -hmm. But if you go to NIMSI Act 2007, section 26 and 27, it's also stated that you cannot obtain passport and driver's license without name. Mm -hmm. So by implication, whoever has his, his own passport is being assumed that he has his own digital ID because digital ID is written on our passport. And whoever obtains driver's license is assumed that he already has his own national ID. Why? Because the number is also written on it. Okay. Today in Nigeria, you cannot obtain password without it. But why do they need to enroll biometrics once again? Shouldn't NIMSI be the only entity that is enrolling biometrics in the country? NIMSI is allowed right. to approve. No, NIMSI has been allowed by law to approve government institutions to obtain biometric. But as the regulatory body, they have to set up the standard mm. for the enrollment. And, and they set it for INEC? Or no, no. INEC they they have power to do that. There is no power. doubt about this. They, okay. This is not questionable at all. Okay. They have power to do that. Okay. NIMSI has power to do that. Okay, so basically the identity authority should be in the business of establishing standards and empowering others that they want to collect biometrics and biometric data and identity data to follow a national standard, which yes. means by defining it by, by default it will be harmonized. Yes. Right now we're dealing with a hybrid situation because INEC has not existed at a time where NIMSI was a, was a huge successor it is today. And we're in the process of harmonizing the database, the including data. bank verification number. Right. We have collected 15 million and we have verified that. Now we're in the process of collecting another around 25 uh, million again from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Very so well. NIMSI has power to harmonize all the existing databases in the country. Minister, I enjoyed our conversation. Unfortunately, time ran out, and I want to thank you once again. Please join me in thanking the minister for... for However, you, did, you didn't ask me about <laughs> that you can question. Ask. Oh, you want me to ask you again about September you, you 16th? May, maybe, maybe later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I'm glad that you have appreciated Nigeria as the first country. Absolutely. Thank you very much, all. Thank you, minister. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we are going to continue with the second segment.